Hi everyone and welcome back to the Cornerstone SMP. I talked about this a few times before, but the concept for my base this season, like the big general concept, is that we have a lot of different smaller areas coming together, um, forming this kind of fantasy world in total. And I'm still so happy with that concept because it just allows me to constantly, you know, jump between different building styles and different themes and completely different ideas. So last episode we spent some time building giant earthworms on the outside, on the cliff side of the base. But now for this one we can move to something completely different and I'd really like to get back to our underground area here to the mine. It just still needs a lot more detailing, a lot more um, life that needs to be added, a lot more story to be told. And um, I want to start with building a path. <laughs> How exciting. Um, but yeah, paths are important and I'm gonna build one leading from our big um, pillars entry here at the beginning of the cave over to the entry of the city part of the Dwarven Kingdom down here. While I was working on this path, I got an idea for a few more buildings in this area that actually has me really excited. Um, so the idea is of course that this is a dwarven kingdom, so there's dwarves, a people living here, working in the mines, mining for coal, for iron, for copper, for amethyst, diamonds, anything you can find down here basically. So what I'd like to do is have a series of smaller buildings dedicated to each of these minerals or materials that can be found down here. And you can see here the first one is finished. It's This is a copper building dedicated to copper. <laughs> um, so we have a little workstation with an anvil. We've got copper ore and also raw copper there on the, on the top shelf. And this is a really neat little trick that I love. So you just push, piston push uh, a minecart into a slab, any slab, and then put a little fence gate behind it and it just looks like, you know, you have this little cart, this little trolley um, that you can push around and it's a really neat detail, I think. Well, definitely one of my favorite little tricks that I've learned somewhere, I don't, I don't really know, but I definitely didn't come up with it myself, I just think it's really awesome. Um, yeah, on the inside there's just a bed because you can never have enough beds, you know, <laughs> there's always a need for sleep. Also, we can look at it from the back, um, which is not very detailed, <laughs> as you can see. It it did, does kind of sit on these crooked little supports down there, which I think are kind of cool, because, you know, the that corner of the building hangs out over the ravine um, that we have here. 
if we ever build anything back here in this side of the cave, then I'll definitely, you know, add more details and maybe a window decoration to the building. Yeah, right, so, and here's a spruce path. Um, I also put in a little bit of tripstone and stone slabs and stairs just to add more detail to the area, make it look a bit more rugged and natural. Right, but as I said, I'm really excited about this new series of builds I want to do down here. And I think the next one I'm just gonna put um, here next to our Amethyst Crystal Lake. So it only makes sense, you know, that it'll be centered around Amethyst. And we also have a bit of a, like, um, rock hill, a little bit of a, I mean it's tiny, but there is some space there which we can use to maybe carve out a little bit and um, add a tiny, a small um, amethyst cave in there as well. I'm so happy to see this area fill up. Honestly, it just looked so boring before and, and now look at it. <laughs> the spruce path now runs along three buildings in total. We of course have our beautiful copper building that we just looked at in detail. And now we have this amethyst cottage. And up there you can see a bit of lapis lazuli. Oh, and I also added this second branch leading up to the mines. Yeah, you've seen these. Maybe this decorating, like you can see right here, I've probably done like in between episodes and haven't really showed off yet. But it's just a few little details. And apart from that, it's just, you know, um, these mine shafts that we have over here in the wall. Yeah, so let's get back to the path um, and let's take a look at the Amethyst Cottage. I do really love also these, these um, rocks and how rugged everything looks and how you have to kind of walk around them and stuff and it really makes the terrain look so much more interesting but yeah um here's the cottage i put in some calcite as well because of the geodes right um i probably could have done more with the inside but it's tiny so honestly I just didn't feel like bothering <laughs> and we have this little wooden path out um out back here leading over to the amethyst cave which I also like. I might actually even put like a little seed in there. I don't know, I'm happy, like this makes me so happy, just these tiny little details and then seeing them all come together into one big build, you know? But this does feel like a place you just wanna sit in, you know, it feels so calming. And you have a nice view from here as well, to see that bridge over there. Okay, back on the path, we also have a little bit of a like tiny river just running down the rock because it looked a bit boring and gray, that bit over there, so I added some water. Also gives it some movement, you know. And then if we walk up, we come to the newest building, this little uh, lapis hut, <laughs> which has absolutely nothing on the inside, but again, it's tidy space. I honestly have no real idea on what to do with that. I'd probably just add a bed. But then out back here, we have this... Um, so the idea is that the concrete powder is supposed to be like the crushed up pigment version of lapis lazuli, right? Because um, a few hundred years ago they used to, or it used to be in really high demand and was very expensive as a use for um, paint. So paint particles were made out of um, lapis lazuli. This is the idea what this is supposed to be. It's basically lapis being crushed up into powder. But now with that we're getting to something that 
I want to do now for the end of the episode because this Dwarven city that we're building, it's not, you know, it's not run down. It's not remnants from the past. This is supposed to be something currently happening. There's history, but it's also still history being written. Um, and it would be cool to actually see some dwarves working down here. Now, you might be thinking, Nellis, what are you talking about? There, there are no dwarves in Minecraft. Um, what's your plan here? Well, while it is true that sadly there are no dwarves in Minecraft, there are those guys. I've actually had a few pillagers down here for a long time, very early in the season. I would often just, um, before, you know, before I had an elytra, I'd just often jump off that bridge. Oh, look at the worms, they look so cool. Um, but yeah, I would, I would just often jump off that bridge, hop on into a boat and just, you know, sail away to wherever. So I had a bunch of boats lying around down here and whenever a patrol came by, some of them would get stuck and I've befriended all of them. So we have four, four guys sitting here. Okay, I'm gonna need to get these two into separate boats for sure. Pushing them is not gonna work very well. <laughs> oh no, I didn't mean to hit you. No, I did it again. Oh my gosh, why did I use the sword? Um, but now we should get them into separate boats easily, hopefully. Stuff like this is usually always more complicated than you than you hope it will be. Now I know pillages aren't exactly they don't exact exactly have a dwarfish stature. Um, they're just as tall as the player, I think. But they do have that really pale grey skin that you get from, you know, spending all of your time underground and never seeing the sun. So it does work out in that way. Now the question is how do we get these guys down there? It's probably actually best if I just dig through the wall here at water level and see where we land. And here we are. Okay, this should probably work out well. We can just boat down there then. Okay, let's get the first of these guys. I also have name tags to prevent them from despawning and also to just give them cool dwarvish names. So this one will be Durin. Oh my gosh, it's already dangerous in here. <laughs> I don't have on any torches on me. So you you don't take any fall damage while you're in a boat, right? Oh, this is, this is actually a really good screenshot opportunity. Me and Durin in a boat. Okay, I yeah, I really don't want Durin to die, so let's hope this goes well. Yes, he even gave me like an approving nod right there. Uh, I, I haven't even thought about where I want to put him exactly. Maybe... He looks so, so polite. Look at him, look at his face. Okay, um, maybe just... Okay, maybe just here in the copper building. We'll have to... Hmm. Yeah, we'll definitely have to make sure that he can't escape, you know. I just put up a bunch of fences and fence gates to prevent him from escaping. And I don't... Maybe I'll change it up to something better in the future, but I actually don't think it looks too bad. So... Oh, how do I get this boat? Don't run away, Durin, please. <laughs> he almost did. Um, but yeah, there he is in hopefully his forever home. He does actually look great in there. I don't know, his his clothes as well I just kind of... they blend in well. He looks awesome. I'm happy with this idea. So where do we want to put the second one? Oh, I guess let's first of all give him a name. Um, you can be Gimli, sure. Okay, Gimli, let's, let's do a jump. It's always fun. <laughs> so I decided Gimli gets to stay in his boat forever. Um, he's gonna be sitting here on the lake. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you can give tamed pillagers um, any items to hold in their hand. Because if you do, I could give him a fishing rod, you know, that would probably look pretty cool. I'm stuck. This is the worst bug, like, or lag or whatever. Oh, it is kind of annoying that they, like, tilt their head. I guess we'll just have to turn the boat a bit so that he looks... He actually looks at the person looking at him. Yeah, there you go, that looks nice. But imagine him holding a fishing rod, that would be even better. But yeah, I don't think you can do that. We're already on number three. This is actually going a lot easier and quicker than I thought it would. That's a pleasant surprise. Um, he's gonna go down here in the cave. 
Yeah, he's called Balin. Let's take a good look at his face. Look, he's again such a polite guy. Um, I put in honey blocks here where, under the carpet you can see there. And I'm hoping that the way that I made it, he's not going to be able to escape. You know, because he's stuck on the honey so he can't jump. And since it's kind of one block lower than everything around him, it's probably going to trap him. Let's hope. <laughs> but yeah, Balin's going to live in the in the crystal cave. That looks adorable. Our last pillager turned dwarf is going to stay here in the Lapis Lazuli building. I really want them just to be spread out fairly well over the city, you know. And I had to move that little, you know, lapis powder thing. <laughs> I probably just put it here on the ground now. I don't know, it doesn't look as cool as before, but it's gonna keep him in there, so that's fine. And dwarf number four, Thorin, has now made his way home, I want to say as well. I feel like I'm just taking these pillagers from their terrible lives and giving them wonderful new ones, you know. This is who they were destined to be, really, I think. Mine workers. There we are. Thorin, look how happy he looks. I do think they're actually really cute, the way that they look when once their crossbows break. Um, yeah, let's recap. We have Thorin here in... Oh, he's probably gonna be doing that a lot in the Lapis building. And then if we go over to the lake, we of course have... Balin in his little crystal cave hanging out. He's still there, so I think the honey thing works. And then we have um, Gimli over there in the boat. And of course, oh I need to get rid of that scaffolding. And of course we have Durin greeting any visitor, any newcomer at the entrance of the kingdom. That is going to do it for today's episode though. I want to thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!